Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of surgery on this tiny little 130 watt hour battery I have here. Now you might remember this battery if you've been following my channel for a while. I built this over five years ago when I was back just a little young YouTuber and I made this battery for a very small lightweight e-bike for my mother-in-law so she could handle a small e-bike. And she's used it regularly for the past five years, but over time the charge connector has started to break down and now it's entirely failed. So I can't charge this battery anymore. I need to swap this connector out for a new one. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me while I show you how easy it is to do that. So let's hit it. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double check that the battery and the BMS seem to be in good condition and that the damage to the charge connector didn't cause any problems elsewhere. So this is a 24 volt battery. We're at 28.9, so full charge here would be 29.4 volts. So it looks like we're at a mostly charged battery here and the BMS seems to be working properly, at least in terms of discharge. Now I can start doing some surgery on this charge connector. So here I'm gonna start cutting away the heat shrink so I can expose the wires. And then one at a time, I'm just gonna cut the wires free from this old connector. And at this point, I wanna be very careful about keeping these two wires apart. That's why I've also cut them at different lengths, so it's harder for them to just come together and accidentally touch. Now, I want to measure the voltage out of the charge connectors and see that we're in good condition there. All right, 28.9 again. So it looks like the charge function of our BMS is also working as expected. So it seems like the damage to the charge connector didn't cause any further problems that we can see with the BMS. Now we can proceed with putting on a new connector here. Now I'm just gonna swap in these barrel connectors that I got here. Uh, these don't have super heavy gauge wires, but this is only a two amp charger, so it's gonna be fine for our purposes. But you do wanna double check any connector you use, as well as any wiring. It's gonna have sufficient current carrying capacity. And for the battery side, we're going to use the female connector here. And I'm just gonna cut this a bit shorter because we don't need so much wire out here, and this will reduce the resistance of the entire connector. And I'll just strip the ends of all of these wires. I'll do the same over here on the battery, again, being very careful not to allow these to touch. Now I'm just gonna tin each of these wires. Then I'm going to slide some heat shrink over the wire here so we can seal up our wire when we're done. And I'm gonna put another piece on the end of this connector just to go over everything when we're done. Here's a little trick I like to do. If you've got a piece of heat shrink that's just a little bit narrow for something you wanna cover, you can use some needle nose pliers and stretch it just a little bit here to get it over whatever you're trying to cover. There, that just gives us a little more room so we don't start shrinking the end here. And now I'll start with the negative here. You can pretty much do either. Now I'm gonna slide my heat shrink over this just to protect it while I do this next connection. This is where a set of helping hands can be nice so you can hold all your wires together. Then I'll slide the heat shrink over this connection as well. And I'm actually gonna use the soldering iron here to shrink these. I'm not actually touching them, I'm just putting it very close. And the reason for that is it's such tight quarters that I don't wanna shrink this larger piece yet with the heat gun. Or let's be honest, I'm probably gonna use a lighter on these because it's right on my work table and I don't have to go find my heat gun. Now I can slide my larger heat shrink down over this connection. And you should probably use a heat gun for this, but my lighter is closer. Now we can check and make sure this connection is correct by plugging in the other end of our connector here. Again, being careful not to touch these wires together. All right, 28.94, exactly what we're looking for. So now we can see we've got the proper polarity here and we're making good connection. So I'll go ahead and unplug this. Now, if I had some of my pretty wire wrap left, I would cover this up so that the connection doesn't look as ugly as this. I'll have to do that later. But now this is essentially finished and we just need to work on our charger now. Because I changed this connector, I also have to change the connector on my charger to match. So let's bring that over. All right, so here's my charger. As I mentioned, this is a two amp charger. So I'm going to swap on my new barrel connector in place of the original RCA connector that we had here. So you can also see how this one is getting quite, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, it's getting quite corroded. So I'm gonna start by cutting off this connector and also I'm going to make sure that the charger is not plugged in while I am doing that. Okay, now I need to expose these wires in here. 
All right, now we've got our wires out and I will strip the ends of these. Now we need to figure out our polarity. Sometimes blue is the positive wire in these chargers, sometimes brown. I've seen it go both ways and there is apparently no standardization in these Chinese chargers. So the way you determine this is you simply plug in the charger and then you measure it using the multimeter. Again, I'm being very careful to keep these wires apart. Now I'll measure with the negative probe on the brown and the positive on the blue. And I get a negative voltage. So I'm gonna switch this around and that tells me that when I have my negative on the blue and the positive on the brown, I get my positive voltage. Perfect. So now I know that the blue is the negative, the brown is the positive. So I'll unplug my charger again. Make sure this is unplugged while you're working on it. Probably a good idea to give it a minute or so for the capacitors in here to discharge themselves. And now I'll just repeat the same process of tinning the ends, soldering them together, and then using heat shrink to seal them. From here I can shrink these pieces and then I'll slide my larger heat shrink over to cover both of these and I will seal this as well. And there we have it, a new charger connector on our charger to match our new connector on our battery. And there we have it, we've installed a new charge connector on our battery and we're good to go. Now ideally I'll go back and add a bit of wire wrap around here just to make it look a little nicer so it doesn't look like I just chopped off a connector and soldered a new one on, which is of course what I just did. I'm not usually super worried about the aesthetics of my projects, much to my wife's dismay, but once I get some more wire wrap, I'll definitely go back and make this look a little nicer. But other than that, this is a fully functional new charger connector and uh, I hope that helped you see how easy it is to do this. You just need to basically chop off your old connector, make sure you keep the wires separate, and solder on a new one with proper heat shrink to keep everything isolated and safe. So uh, if you enjoyed that video, I hope you'll let me know in the comments down below. And last but not least, before I go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Dib of Krill. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Just let me know which one of those you'd like and where to send it. And anybody else watching this video, if you want one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below and hopefully you will be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't wanna wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for your support, everybody. I'll see you next time.